So do you feel like somebody's stabbing your heels with needles when you get up in the morning? I get a lot of really strange looks and comments when people see a 66-year-old geezer running down the road in Vibram Five Fingers. They think I'm crazy, and maybe I am. But uh, the good news is I've had no plantar fasciitis flare-ups in the seven years since I got used to running barefoot style in Vibram Five Fingers. Doesn't work for everybody, but it worked for me and it's possible it'll work for you. So here's my story. I started running when I was about 25 years old, kind of kind of late in life, but I was never a natural runner. I'm, I'm too big at six foot four, 230 pounds. Uh, I'm not designed to be a marathon runner. But that was about 40 years ago and uh, I've never stopped, though I'm not particularly good at it. About a dozen or so years ago, I started really serious backpacking. And if you're a hiker or backpacker, you depend on your feet. Those are your wheels. They're what make you go, and they have to work. Not long after that, I don't know if there was a cause and effect or just correlated, but uh, right around then, my arches completely collapsed. I started out at a size 10 and a half shoe uh, for most of my life. And then within about a couple years, my arches just collapsed and I was a size 12 uh, after they collapsed. And right about then is when I really started feeling plantar fasciitis. Uh, when I was hiking, uh, I'd arrive in campsite after, after hiking for 15 miles. And after I sat down for a while and my feet relaxed, I, I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk again once I, once I sat down. It was, it was so horrible. So I had it, I had it pretty bad. So I, I did what most people do. I, I researched plantar fasciitis on the web and I tried every single cure I could see out there. I tried rolling my feet with golf balls or tennis balls and that didn't do anything for me. I tried both custom and over-the-counter orthotics. Uh, they were completely useless. I tried taping my feet and that actually worked but it's really hard to learn to do and it's extremely time consuming. I tried switching shoes. I switched to Echo shoes and they helped at work a, a little bit. They kept the pain down, but uh, they certainly weren't a cure. I tried anti-inflammatories, Aleve, Ibuprofen. They helped a little bit, but boy, uh, lots of stomach issues from taking those on a repeated basis. I tried stretching. Toes on the wall really helps, but you have to repeat it uh, quite often during the day for it to be effective, but it does help. What finally worked for me was uh, I started out with a night splint or a boot that was prescribed by my, uh, by my podiatrist and it worked, but it was so big and clunky that uh, I, it was hard for me to sleep and it wasn't portable, I couldn't take it hiking. So I came across this thing called a Strasbourg sock and it's really bizarre looking. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but it does what a night splint boot does. It actually keeps your toes curled up and you alternate nights with it uh, and that actually gave me some, some decent relief. Uh, and this is fairly comfortable to wear at night. It's ugly as sin, but, uh, but fairly comfortable. And uh, that allowed me to, uh, to at least continue on. One of the realities that you find out once you start looking for plantar fasciitis cures, if you will, is it seems like different things work for different people. And uh, what finally cured my plantar fasciitis is uh, running uh, barefoot style in Vibram Five Fingers. I've been doing this now for eight years. Uh, I run about 15 miles a week, three to four times per day, four miles normally, sometimes five. Um, but uh, all I can say is uh, since I started doing this, um, I have not had a serious flare up. When I first started running in the five fingers, it actually made it worse for a while. Uh, it has to get worse before it gets better because what you're doing 
is you're strengthening your plantar fascia. You're actually strengthening the muscles and the connective tissue uh, in your feet uh, through barefoot style running by actually stressing the whole chain here, the plantar fascia, the Achilles tendon, and the calf muscles, which act as a shock absorber. So uh, it helped me enough to the point where I ran a half marathon in 2013, uh, just before I turned 60 years of age. And uh, from what I could tell, I was the only one in the Oro Valley Marathon that actually ran in these uh, crazy Vibram Five Fingers. But uh, I finished in a reasonable time, and. Um, I uh, haven't looked back since. So one of the questions I get is, why, why do I keep running in these silly Vibram Five Fingers? Well, first of all, it just plain feels good. When you're, when you're running down the road in a barefoot style shoe or barefoot, uh, it almost feels like I'm flying to some extent. There's this feeling of liberation, of lightness, of not just stomping on my heels as I go down the road that I really enjoy. Uh, I'm also quite honestly petrified that if I stop doing this and I allow my plantar fascia to get weak again, that my plantar fasciitis will return and I really don't want to have that happen. It also strengthens my calves. I've always had very weak calf muscles, uh, very small calf muscles, and uh, this has certainly helped strengthen that part of my body. The, the nice thing about Vibram Five Fingers is there's, there's other uses for them. Um, you can use them for rowing on recovery days. Uh, the gym I go to, Anytime Fitness, does not allow me to, uh, to do anything barefoot or in socks. Uh, closed toed shoes are required. So by getting on the rowing machine uh, in my Vibram Five Fingers, I feel a much better connection to the machine and I feel like I can row with more, with more power. Barefoot jump rope uh, I use as kind of an exercise break during the day. If I'm sitting at my desk for too long, I'll get up and I'll do uh, 100 to 200 uh, jumps in, with my jump rope. Uh, and if you do them uh, in your Vibram Five Fingers, it'll really help strengthen your feet. It's a nice way of transitioning into barefoot running, uh, just doing barefoot jump rope to strengthen your feet. Uh, the other nice thing about it is that it does provide some protection for your toes. If you're just learning uh, to jump rope, quite often you'll flub up and you'll whack yourself in the toes with the rope and it hurts if you're barefoot, whereas if you have the five fingers on, it gives you at least a little bit of, of protection. The other thing I use them for is weightlifting when doing squats and deadlifts. One of the cues you learn when you're weightlifting is squatting and deadlifting is pushing with your legs, not pulling the bar off the ground, especially when you're deadlifting. Um, and and the, the Vibram Five Fingers really help give my brain a cue that I should be pushing with my feet and my legs and not lifting the bar. So those, there's a lot of, of real purists out there that are truly barefoot runners. Uh, and I have never been able to make the transition to complete barefoot. Uh, one reason is I have sensitive feet. Um, if I, I find I can't even hike on pine needles like this uh, uh, hike that's being depicted in, in Oregon, uh, you would think that this nice, cushy, soft trail would be perfect for barefoot hiking, but just the pine needles on that uh, just drove my feet crazy. So. Uh, uh, barefoot hiking just doesn't work for me. Uh, in terms of running here in Tucson, there's too much glass and rocks and cactus thorns on Tucson streets, and I'm just not willing to uh, risk the injury of, of running barefoot. And I find uh, the Vibram Five Fingers are close enough to barefoot that I don't feel like I'm missing much, and uh, they protect my feet from all the nasty stuff that you'll see on the streets here. Some of the things to, uh, to look out for is, first of all, it's really important if you're gonna try barefoot style running to try to cure your plantar fasciitis, it's important to cross train to, to rest your feet up. Uh, swimming is a great exercise. Uh, it's, it's really easy on your joints. It's non-load bearing. Uh, doesn't use your calf muscles, so swimming is a great uh, cross-training exercise if you're barefoot running. Uh, rowing is a fantastic uh, 
uh, sport that I've just returned to. I did it a little bit in my freshman year in college uh, at Wisconsin. And uh, late in life, I've, I've kind of returned to it, and it's a great uh, leg, a whole body exercise that, that really takes the, the weight off of your legs and allows you to, uh, to rest your running muscles. Uh, cycling is a great cross-training exercise. Again, it's uh, completely non-load-bearing, very quad-dominant, uh, so it's a nice alternative to running. Uh, jump roping, jumping rope, like I mentioned before, is also a good cross-training. And of course, hiking. Hiking and backpacking are a fantastic uh, alternative to running on my off days. So one of the things I learned is it's very important not to overwork this shock absorber chain uh, that you use when you're barefoot running. The, the feet, the bottoms of the feet in particular, the Achilles tendon and the calf muscle uh, during the eccentric contractions when you're striking the ground with a forefoot strike while you're running um, can get overtrained. Uh, one of the things I did wrong is I was doing uh, too many, um, I was doing too many calf raises in the gym and then when I would go out and run, uh, my calf muscles would, uh, would get really sore. And in fact, I had a tear, a, a micro tear a few months ago that, uh, that sidelined me for a while. So you gotta be very, very careful not to, not to overtrain. And this comes back to cross training again. If you're cross training, then you're, uh, you're not gonna overtrain. So just a word or two about the shoes. Uh, they last me about a year and a half, which is about a thousand miles of running. And at that point, the bottom at that point, the bottoms of the shoes will start to wear out. Uh, you'll start to actually wear through the tread. Uh, these are have probably uh, half the life left on them yet. Uh, I attempted uh, to transition to more of a, a truly minimalist shoe several years ago. I tried hiking and running in zero sandals. Um, I've pretty much given up on that uh, and shifted to ultra lone peaks. Um, it's just too mentally and physically fatiguing to hike on the rocky trails we have here in Arizona uh, with minimalist shoes and I find the ultra lone peaks are a nice compromise between having zero drop and just enough protection where I don't have to constantly look out for, for rocks to not step on. Uh, last but not least, as I've gotten older, a certain amount of arthritis has set into uh, my feet, and I find uh, uh, CBD cream can be helpful. Um, your plantar fascia are very close to the surface, right underneath the skin, so by applying um, some CBD cream at night, uh, I've found that it helps alleviate some of the arthritis uh, that I've developed in my feet from 40 years of running. So that's it. That's my plantar fasciitis story, and I'm sticking to it. And uh, thanks very much for watching and listening to my story, and uh, I hope you learned something from this. And if you did, please like or subscribe down below. Thanks a lot.